the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, everybody. Hey, look, I don't know about you, but I'm really getting a good revelation on the fruits of the Spirit. And, and I, I want to make sure everybody understands this. You must be born again. I mean, that, that, that you, you can't bear fruit of the Spirit without being born again. What this series or discussions that you're seeing and reminders coming from, the fact is that we need to move toward conforming to the image of Christ. Once we're born again, you know, in the Romans, you know, 12, uh, I think it's 12, 2, it says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by renewing your mind. See, we have to renew our mind, be transformed into that image of Christ so that people can see us, okay? And and, and the, the, the thing is that we represent, we're supposed to be ambassadors for Christ. So not only are we supposed to be conforming to the image of Christ, you know, as a matter of fact, you think about it, just in the real world of being an ambassador, uh, you you basically saying that you are a representative of the country that you are uh, from. And see, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. And I think the problem is, at least for me, is that many people have tried to focus on maybe ministries and really, when I think about it, uh, <laughs> there's the body of Christ and then there's the people who call themselves part of the body of Christ. And to a degree, many have sit there and tried to um, wrap us up in traditions and, 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 and all that other stuff that we forget that we're, we're actually here to be focused on um, being transformed, becoming, being led by the Holy Spirit. And I guess to me, I think the biggest issue I see people may think about the church is that people have been seeing phoniness. And, and, and listen, it's not all the way across the board, but you got to, I think a lot of us need to understand the perception that people have concerning the body of Christ and religious people. See, I don't think they really, I don't think you've turned off by Jesus Christ. I think people have been turned off by religion and religiosity. You know, we try to come up with the traditions and everything else just to make us seem like we're, we're tracking. But in reality, we've been putting, a lot of people have been taught to put on front. A lot of people have been taught not to understand the word of God. They, they've been learned to, to get to the point where, where they let the pastor be the anointed person or the, or the, or the ministers be the anointed person or the deacons be the, the anointed people. And, and so we follow, this for me saying growing up in, uh, or entering into the body of Christ, I, I really started uh, very late, right after college. But going into the body of Christ, one of the things I was kind of like, I don't know what's going on. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I think a lot of people probably feel the same way. They kind of like, what is it? Okay, I'm in Christ now. Help me understand what I'm supposed to do. And in a lot of cases, ministries are quick to suck you up and start getting you, putting you to work, even as you're a novice. And then if it's almost like this, you learn something incorrectly and then you pass it on to somebody else and all you end up doing is replicating error. And, and I think the biggest part of error, and I think that even happened even with Jesus had with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. A lot of cases, they were religious people, law focused and they used the church, they weaponized the synagogue uh, to, to keep people under control. Talking about they'll put you out of the church, you know, and 
basically putting you out means you're apostate or you're, you're just you just unruly and putting you out of the ministry is representing putting you out of, of God's kingdom. And I've seen it for the for the years. Uh, if you think about it, see, I can't focus too much on the world, but there's a lot of history dealing with the world too. But I still keep coming back, even when we talked about where was the body of Christ? The body of Christ during slavery. Where was it? Where was it talking about bearing fruit? What was the dominant, who, what was dominating the believer? Who were they following? See, it, either the church was so afraid that it just went along to get along during the 400 years of slavery, or the church was part of the problem. See, when Jesus came along, he changed or challenged the culture of that time. And what we need to understand is you as a believer be followers of Christ, not follow a man. And when man, let's go with slavery, allowed the atrocities, I mean, there were some serious atrocities too. I, I might find out some bad things. It was not bad fruit because they had to be part of the problem. Because it was not confronting the problem, it was part of the problem. <laughs> you remember Jesus said when he came in, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. A new kingdom is here. Saying that we're no longer in this world, but I mean, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. I mean, we're in another kingdom. And we, I don't know if that's even been taught for people to say, you are in another kingdom if you're in the body of Christ. And you represent Jesus. So when people see you, they will see Jesus. And if you are in a situation where, and I'm talking about, let's go with the atrocity, all the way from slavery to Jim Crow's law, and, and, and even the situation where you see people, cops killing people because of the color of the skin, or treating people differently because of the color of their skin. And then you see the people that are supposed to be representing of Christ, even people they call, you know, we call this thing evangelicals, right? Evangelicals, right? But they follow something or pattern or behavior that wasn't bearing fruit. But you call yourself the church. It's time for us to start realizing we have to bear the fruits of the Spirit. It's not an option. That's the whole point. And you know, some people probably get mad. I'm sitting there talking about the fruits of the spirit. Why? Because religion is easier to do, to operate in. Therefore, all I need to operate in my title, all I need to operate in my paraphernalia, all I need to do is do things that looks like is, is godly. Or just make sure I just do it in the four walls. But when I come out, I suppose to act just like the world. And if they can't start seeing the difference between you and the world, you need to check your fruit. Now, you don't like, maybe some people don't like the word fruit. Some people think, oh, that's kind of weak. I had one of my friends, I mean, a good, good, good friend of mine. You know, he was, he, he, he used the wrong example, but he used it. He said, it's, it, the world like those strong, uh, bully type of, of personality. They, they, they consider strength by using the dominance of their physical proudness, their, their ability to, to be able to fight physically and attack things physically and then dominate the situation with their, with their physical proudness and, and, their, and their, you know, right? And, and, and it had, and a friend, and you know, he's gonna listen to this video, so he might say it too. He, he, he used the analogy of Pee-wee Pee Herman as the body of Christ. Now, that, can't, that is not an isolated view. See, some people try to sit there, and even you talk about even Islam sometimes, and national Islam sitting there trying to make it seem like we are more passive. And if we are painted that image that we're just passive people and, and, and opposed to godly, but the Bible said those who live godly shall suffer persecution. But we're supposed to live godly. 
I don't think people understood what that looks like. See, and I, I give the example, when Jesus, when he was walking and doing his ministry, he didn't run for nobody. There's nothing where Jesus ran. When they came to arrest him, John, I love John. John's the best one. John was sitting there, sitting there. They come up there and they, they look at him and swords and steel, uh, swords and clubs and, 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 and lanterns and, 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 and say, Jesus, who are you looking for? Jesus of Nazareth. And they fell down. That was showing, John was showing that that's telling you the power of a Christian. A power of Jesus. We remember we're supposed to be representative of Jesus. The example is Jesus. The power of Jesus. There's a scripture in there where the, 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 the guards came looking for Jesus, and, and, and Jesus told them, It's not, I'm not ready yet. And they went back and told the Pharisee, the Pharisee, where is he? They say, Ain't nobody talked like that before. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> you, <laughs> you know, bottom day translation, you go get him. He, he, I ain't never seen nobody talk like that before. In other words, it was not a symbol of weakness. And when you think about these fruits of spirit, there is no symbol of weakness in those, those scriptures. If you know, if somebody said, if love is a symbol of weakness, then what in the world do you think when he even demonstrated himself, he gave his life for the world, willingly laid it down? How many people, how many husbands, how many, how many husbands, how many mothers have put their life in front of harm's way to protect their children out of love? You think love is weak? Love stands. Love was to will go against the worst of the enemies to protect those that they love. No, don't, 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 don't take love as weakness. People love their country. The soldiers have died because they love this country. They're on the battlefield because they love this country, love their family. Don't, don't ever take love as weakness. You love this country? Will you fight for this country? Well, guess what? I will. I did my 20 years. Love is not weak. Don't even think that. So fruit of the spirit, first one, love? No, that's not weak. The fruit of the, the, the fruit of joy, the characteristic of the fruit was one fruit, but nine characteristics. That fruit, joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength, gives me strength to go through the storms that I need to go through. Christianity is not a place of weakness. Christianity is a operate from a position of strength because God Almighty is your foundation. He fights your battles. He said he don't look for fear. The Bible said, God said, I'm not giving you a spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. Have you checked your fruits today? And if you think that, that those fruits, those characteristics equals weakness or Pee Wee Herman, you come me, come to me and see if you see a Pee Wee Herman. I don't care who you are, you come to me. There's no, there's, saints don't coward, saints stand. And that's what you're supposed to do. But you're supposed to do it in love. You're supposed to bear these fruits. Let's go and remember what these fruits are. I mean, I know I get a long introduction, but I think it's important for us to understand. Did, Chris, the fruit of the spirit is not talking about weakness. We sit there, we love to think we talk about being easy on people. That's not what he's asking us to do. Look at this in the fruits of the spirit in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the fruits of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, which is patience. Patience when people plucking your nerves. Gentleness, goodness, Faith means faithfulness, meek, temperance, which means self-control. I told you before, in sports, if you sit there and when you go in boxing or you, 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 you do football or basketball, the coach always says, get your head in the game. In other words, when you stay in control of the situation, you are be able, you're better positioned to handle the situation. It's when you lose control, all things fall apart. 
So I, I, I want to show some scriptures here, and I want to show about one you really love. I'm really excited about this, and I hope I, I may, I may be going very long, and I may have to make this part A, part B for the, on the fruit of uh, goodness. But the thing, we're going to talk about goodness, and, 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 and I'm showing you, look at the difference between when Jesus referred to goodness, and he is our example, that, that there's, a, there's a power in it, right? There's a power in it. So let's go with the first set of scriptures. And then I want to get into John, man. That's really powerful. All right. And and, and I appreciate those who take time to listen to these, these, these segments because it's all about understanding what you are as a Christian. You're not weak. You're strong. But you're strong in him. Because that's what the Bible said. Without him, you can do nothing. All right. Look at this. I like this. This is a, most people a famous scripture. And it says, the Lord is my shepherd. That's what we need to get our minds into. It's not the, the, the pastors, it's not the ministers, it's not the ministry. The Lord is my shepherd. Huh? It says in this, side of verse one, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Look at this. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil. See that? I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod in thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me where in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely what? Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, I don't think you understand that. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil. That doesn't sound like a peewee hermit. That doesn't sound like a bully, because bullies run when they feel like they're overwhelmed. The Christian goes through this valley, go through this life with Christ Jesus, comforting them with his rod and his staff. And then he leads you to the green pastors. Come on now. That's why it's so important for us to get to understand who we are in Christ Jesus and the power that comes along with it. Now, I want to show you another one. This is this is real good. And so before we can wrap this up, I, and, I, and I know I won't be able to, to, to comment as much as I want to, but because I think these scriptures right here almost speak for themselves. Uh, <laughs> you'll love this. Watch this. In John 10, 16, I mean, John 10, verse 6, this prayer was spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things uh, they were, which he spake unto them. Then Jesus said unto them again, Verily I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be what? Saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but to steal and to steal kill and to destroy. I come that they might have what? Life. That they might have it more abundantly. Look at this, verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep. Whoa, man. Come on now. Hmm. <laughs> but look at this. Look at the difference between having Christ and what he means, what the good shepherd does. Look at that. Look at the difference between a good shepherd, because we're talking about the fruit of the spirit, right? And we're talking about goodness, right? That characteristic, right? What does good do? Well, look at this. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd who own the sheep or not, who own, who own the sheep or not, see as the wolf cometh and what he does, he leaves the sheep and flees and the wolf catches them and scatter the sheep. A good mother won't do that. A good father won't do that. They'll stand in harm's way. 
a soldier that really protect this country stands in harm's way. Come on now, look at the difference to this. What was a good, what goodness mean in the term of God? It doesn't mean oh, I'm just so nice to you. No, I'm 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 a shepherd and I take care and protect those things I'm supposed to protect. Look at this. As the father, he said, I'm the good shepherd and know my sheep and I know, wait a minute, wait, did I miss one? Okay, with 13. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and cares not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and I'm known of mine. As the father knows me, even so know I the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And the other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold, and what? One shepherd. <laughs> you know, that's, that makes sure you understand that. Therefore does my father love me, because I laid down my life, that I may what? Take it again. No man taketh it from, look at that now, no man taketh it from me, by laying it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. Come on, look at what it means when he, when Jesus gave us an example of a good shepherd. See, we, we in the world wants to sit there and try to make that determination of what good means. We want to sit there and say, oh, I'm just, yes, whatever you, you do anything to me, you can do anything to my family, you can just roll over me, you know, I'm just so good, I don't, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to, I, I'm just, I just will be good, see, it don't mean, I, it, but the Bible says, even in, in the Psalm 23, it, I will fear no evil for thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me, huh? He, he, he takes me to green pastures. He said he will put he will prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies so that I can stand and don't have fear of my enemies. And then he showed the example about the good shepherd. He said, Harlan, when danger comes, will run because it's not his sheep. Jesus said the good shepherd defends his sheep. He doesn't run from danger. And he's telling you as a believer in Christ Jesus, good means not to be just oh so happy and lucky. It just means you be strong and you do things that are right. And that's acceptable. Have you checked your fruit today? Are you a good shepherd? Are you a good husband? Are you a good wife? Are you a good son and daughter? Are you somebody that do things that's right? Stand up for what's right? Or are you somebody that just runs when danger comes? That you're not willing to, 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 to rescue your family in a fire. You're not willing to rescue your family in the face of danger. You don't want to be the first one to take the bullet. You, you're going to be the last one, right? You're going to leave them because you're not good. Look at the definition. Look at the script. I didn't bring it up. It's already there. And maybe that's maybe it's time for us to learn to be good so that we don't fall and follow people that do things that's bad. Huh? We don't cower down to badness. We stand up to badness and say, no, this is not right. Check your fruit today and understand goodness is not about being some lollipop. It means being firm and doing things that's right. Be a good husband is a provider, right? A good mother is a good nurturer, right? A good child is someone that does what the parents tell them to do and stays out of trouble, huh? Think about it. Have you checked your fruit today? This may have been long, but it's right on time. I'm glad you listened, and I hope you come back again, but I guarantee you, fruits of the spirit ain't nothing about weakness. It's all about strength, and it's all about love, and it's all about power, and that power rests in God. Amen. I'll check you later. See you next time. Bye-bye.